This is the east entrance. This is the more rustic park. From the other side, the west entrance is actually probably a more urban entrance. Actually, the whole entire island is zero energy. It's very self-sufficient. We built what we call an eco-toilet. On the roof, we actually have a green roof that is to slow down the rainwater. We harvest the water from the rain and they are used for toilet flushing as well as hand washing. The water here is not treated. These are not for drinking. If you see the light tube down there, it's actually using uh, sunlight and uh, illuminates the indoor space. We use solar power to power the mechanical pumps to, for the toilet uh, flushings. Last year, we have a storm and quite a number of the trees are uprooted. So what we do is we recycle some of these woods for seatings, for benches, for signage. We actually recycle most of them for a boardwalk at the mangrove area. Very tall, conical shapes. Um, they have leaves like needles. It's because of this characteristic, they can strive very well under a coastal condition, which is high wind exposure, salt sprays as well. So you see a lot of them, they dominate the whole entire island, in fact. In the morning, if you come in about seven plants in the morning, you'll see otters. There were about a group of eight otters. Yeah, and they usually, so it's on my right hand side, they will play along the dam. Birds are very sensitive, they are very sensitive to movements as well as voices. So if you get too close to them, they tend to fly away. It was built from a very simple material, it's just a few pipes. Your tall lenses probably can go through the cripples and you can take very nice shots of the birds. In the event of a storm, the structures is strong enough to withstand the force. So this design intent has been thought through in order to build a structure like that. To keep it simple, rustic, uh, to serve its purpose, and yet it still can blend very well with the park setting. Uh, this was found along the coastline along Katong but it was affected by development works so we went there and we tried to salvage it and uh, get it replanted here uh, these cycads can grow probably up to 1000 years old so this tall one is about 3.5 meter tall whereas this one uh, in terms of diameter it consists of a cluster of them in terms of diameter is about 2 meter Uh, when we first come onto the park, this is the first bin we spot, All right? Uh, so we keep it for display. I think people thought it was, you know, really a little bin.
and then of course you see the sign that is also one of the vintage piece that we left on the park itself we just uh, gave a nice coat of paint to the words Coney Island and there is a bench This is one of the uh, colonial buildings that is left behind that we found on the part itself. Uh, it used to belong to the Hapa brothers uh, related to the Tiger Balm. Uh, this uh, whole architecture is uh, modeled very much after the colonial building. This, what you can see, is like a front of house, probably the veranda that goes up into the front hall. Uh, and then with some of the sites holes uh, at the peripherals we probably this could be used as a dance floor for entertainments right uh, and the sites hall probably to use for guests uh, there are some uh, servant quarters as well the kitchens at the back of the house uh, probably used by the uh, servants who then take care of the whole entire building uh, it used to be uh, quite a grand piece of architecture I would think so uh, fronting the beach and also uh, surrounded by the uh, natural vegetation around here Sometimes when we walk past a forest setting like this and sometimes you feel droplets on you and you thought it was raining, actually it was not. Cicada pee? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know. <laughs> yeah. Cicada urine pee. <laughs> Cicada pee. <laughs>